The tropical rainforests that cover much of Southeast Asia are a hotbed of diversity for an all manner of invertebrates, and among the most fearsome are giant centipedes. There are many types of centipede in these Asian rainforests, and Malaysia in particular is home to an impressive suite of these swift venomous predators. Everything from huge and strikingly coloured species like the Malaysian jewel, a likely undescribed member of the genus Scolopendra, to complete oddballs like Edentostoma octosolcatum, a slow-moving, elaborately armoured centipede that specialises in preying on millipedes. This video, however, will be focused on one of the more enigmatic members of Malaysia's centipede fauna a species yet to be described by science, and one that, in the centipede-keeping hobby, has only reared its head a handful of times. It's another member of that most infamous genus of centipedes, Scolopendra, nicknamed the Malaysian Tiger or Ryu Giant. Of course, these nicknames are just that, nicknames, and do not represent anything of actual taxonomic value. Now before I go any further, I'd like to mention our sponsor, Raid Show. yeah, just kidding. But what I would like to mention is that since there have been no scientific publications concerning the species, at least that I'm aware of, all of the information I'll be presenting about the Malaysian tiger will be anecdotal, and based off the experience of the very small number of hobbyists who have kept this species. The Malaysian tiger centipede occurs on Peninsula Malaysia, as well as the Ryu Islands, but to my knowledge is not present in eastern Malaysia. However, given the very limited number of wild observations of this species, the full extent of its range is difficult to approximate with any substantial degree of confidence. Oh look at me, beefing up that word count like it's a high school essay. Like many of the large centipedes that inhabit tropical rainforests, the Malaysian tiger exhibits arboreal tendencies, and many photographs of wild individuals show them resting on tree trunks. Although they may be more inclined toward a tree-dwelling lifestyle than most centipedes, they are by no means limited to it. This one was observed resting in a shallow pool of water, suggesting that the species may have slight amphibious inclinations too. This is in fact more plausible than it may immediately sound, as a partially aquatic lifestyle has been observed in other large Asian centipedes, like Scolopendra alciona and Scolopendra paradoxa. Again, given our very limited knowledge of the Malaysian tiger, it's difficult to arrive at any robust conclusions about the species' ecology. But it is pretty safe to say that they don't seem to be very fussy about their chosen resting places. The Malaysian tiger is also a very large centipede, among the biggest in Asia, approaching 25 centimetres in length, and with a rather robust body to boot. Its legs are relatively long, as is typical for centipedes with arboreal tendencies, and often have a faint blue tinge that becomes slightly more pronounced toward the animal's rear. But perhaps the most noteworthy aspect of this centipede's anatomy is its falsipules. Falsipules, sometimes alternatively referred to as toxiconaths, are a centipede's trademark weapons, a pair of modified legs that inject venom, and those possessed by the Malaysian tiger are huge. Relative to body size, they are among the largest found in any centipede. These are backed by a most virulent venom, capable of subduing large prey items such as mice in a matter of seconds. Reports of bites on humans are extremely rare, but one person who received an envenomation from the species described it as the most painful inflicted by any centipede he had ever worked with, leaving species like Scolopendra dehani, Scolopendra subspinipes and Scolopendra heros completely in the dust. Of course, one can't really reach a solid conclusion based off a single bite report, especially since effects of envenomations can vary depending on the victim, and ranking centipede venom potencies in a definitive hierarchy is thus very difficult. However, it does seem pretty clear that the Malaysian tiger is not an animal to be trifled with. 
The man who received the envenomation described above was also among the first people to ever keep the species, and his YouTube channel, The Pure Life, which seems to be inactive now, was honestly one of the main reasons I decided to start my own channel. He posted a few videos with a male Malaysian tiger called Stanley, if I recall correctly, which he had worked with to the point of it becoming extremely calm and handleable. Not something I'd recommend doing, especially with such a venomous species, but it does show that centipedes are not the mindlessly aggressive monsters that many believe them to be. Much more recently, the species was bred in captivity for the first time, which allowed us to learn a little more about this mysterious centipede. Babies are very similar in coloration to the cherry red variant of Scolopendra de Harnai, with which the Malaysian tiger is sympatric in the wild, and the species grows very rapidly. These individuals here are only a year old and are already quite sizeable. I must say, it is great to see rarely kept species being successfully bred. Far too often people will receive an import of centipedes or other invertebrates from some exotic country, sell them off for a quick buck, and then of course they eventually die without ever having been bred because no one could be bothered, and the species ceases to be available. The blue-legged variant of Ethmostigmus trigonopodus is a prime example of this. What was once a centipede kept by numerous hobbyists around the world is now almost unheard of in captivity. Scolopendra hardwickii, one of the most sought-after centipede species for reasons that I don't think need any explaining, seems to be heading down a similar path. So in short, if you want your favourite species to not fade into obscurity in a few years, do some fucking breeding. Sorry, I don't know where that anger came from. And that's the end of this video. I know it's quite short, or probably very short compared to my usual uploads, but it is way too hot at the moment for me to go outside and film stuff in the bush. Which of course puts some big restrictions on how much content I can post. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video then feel free to subscribe and check out some of my other uploads. Let me know what you thought in the comments section as well. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.